Welcome to Take 4 in our series on Jeet Kune Do Scientific Street Fighting. My name is Jerry Beasley, and I'll be your instructor for this tape as well. Now, in the 1960s, Jeet Kune Do was first making inroads into national publicity, and it did so by its emphasis on its full contact training. One of Bruce Lee's students, Joe Lewis, uh, who worked with Bruce from 1967 and 1968, introduced the art of full contact kickboxing in 1970. After working with Bruce Lee and learning the strong side forward stance, Joe Lewis introduced this art by using the exact same techniques that he'd learned in the Jeet Kune Do. He was able to take on 10 opponents from any number of different styles and knock each one out in the first or second round. In fact, he gained such a reputation for his full contact fighting that it made him an actual legend in the sport of both karate and full contact kickboxing. Now, in this particular tape, what we're going to try to do is introduce you to the full contact fighting method designed by Bruce Lee, taught to Joe Lewis, and something that I've worked with as well. As we do this, we're going to go through several levels of competition. We'll begin with just some evasive techniques, then we're going to work on some technique versus technique, then we'll start introducing the contact little by little. First to the body, then with the kicking, then to the head, then the full contact kicking and punching that we'll get to. Let's go ahead and begin the tape with our evasive footwork maneuvers. As we introduce the full contact fighting method, we want to begin with evasive footwork. Now, obviously, if your opponent is trying to get at you and you can get away from him, that's to your advantage. And we call that evading the attack. Ian, come on in here. This is Ian Marshall, who's been my partner through the series here. If Ian's punching at me and I can move back out of the way and use that distance as my defense, that's what I want to try to use. I also have the option of moving over, angling out to the right, angling out to the left, or moving in and pivoting out away. We covered that in tape number two on mobility. Now, I'm going to have Ian just throw some techniques at me, and I'll just let you see how we move back and forth. Okay, Ian to the stomach here, and moving. Now, notice I'm not actually hitting. I'm just trying to move around here to control him. And, and whenever I see him get sit again, I'm in position to move into him to stop him. And basically what I'm trying to do here is step out of the way to take my position to move to where he is weak. Let me slow it down here for a second. If you punch out and I know the next technique is going to be that right cross, I'll step over here where I know he's going to be weak. Now, if I were trying to attack him, I could attack with techniques, but I'm just trying to evade at this time. Also, if he throws the jab, I have the option of moving out away from him, again with a pivot step. If I happen to get caught in close like this, I'll attempt to hang on and then move out of the way. Again, Ian, if you're just working with me, punching in, you can see what I'm doing here, just moving the techniques back and forth with the footwork. So, once again, if you can evade the attack, that's to your advantage. To supplement the evasive maneuvers, we can also add blocking. Now, this isn't the type of blocking that we look at in a karate or a kung fu system, but rather quick little motions with the arms and elbows. What we're trying to do is take the attack in and just stop it before it goes in. Ian, if you'll come in, just slowly if you'll punch with your left hand. If he punches with his left, I want to just take my elbow. Now, I really don't want to use my hand and block at this time because if I do that, what's happened to me? He's opened up high line for him to counter. But if he punches in and I use that block simply to move it out of the way to stop it with my elbow, my hand is still in a good position and he has blocked his attack. So as he punches in, I'll just move my hand slightly. I move my body and like that. Now if he's doing the jab, I want to use my reverse hand to block with. As he jabs, I block here. Now the reason I didn't want to use my front hand to block with, while I could, is that again, I've opened up. I've given him the opportunity to move in. So I'll use my reverse hand to block, which really put it in a position of missing me, plus I'm in position to hit him. So as he punches, I'll go one, just like that. One, just like that. One, just like that. One, just like that. Let me show the camera, and if you'll step back for a minute. As my opponent punches into the body, uh, I'm just gonna use my reverse hand like this, 
and move. Now, by the way, we're using an orthodox boxing stance, that is, taking the strong side and placing it back. Now, obviously, if you've practiced a number of years, your left side and your right side would probably be equal in terms of strength. You won't have a dominant side. In fact, both sides should be dominant if you've uh, really trained both sides to do that. So I've taken my typical right hand and placed it back. This way, I'm sitting up the opponent and then throwing my power in. Now, if I trained only one side and I had to have that strong side out, I'll use a different type of technique for that. But in this case, I'm using what's called orthodox boxing. I'll place my strong side back here. So as my opponent punches in, I'm just going to take my right hand and lightly move. Now notice as the punch comes into the body like this, as my elbow comes out, it really kind of hits and stops it right there. So I just go like that, a simple little motion. If I want to put my hip into it, I'll get even more power, but just a simple little motion like that. Now when the right cross comes at me, I'm not going to use my right hand, I'm going to use my front hand because the right cross will be blocked just like that. So in blocking, I'm actually only going one, two, and one, and two. Now we're just working at the body at this time. Later on, we'll look at the head and how to sled, bob, and weave, and how to parry the technique. But at this time, we're looking just at the body shots. We want to block one, two, and one, and two. And so sometimes you'll see a fighter moving around, and they're just actually training their blocks as they do these techniques, block, block. And that's all there is to it. Ian, if you'll come back in for a sec. Okay. As he punches with the left hand, I block. As he punches with the right hand, there's my block. Left hand, block. Right hand, block. Now, you've got to actually try to make contact. Block, block. Now, if he doesn't try to make contact, and if you're training at home with a partner, and your partner punches out here, punch, okay, you've missed. Now, you've already evaded the attack using distance. It's when they get in too close and you can't evade using distance that you have to go to blocking. So you have to make sure that your partner tries to at least touch the stomach as they're punching. Punch and punch and right hand and right hand and right and left and right and left. All right, now this time I'm going to try to move around for a second with Ian punching at me and when possible and when appropriate, I'm going to use blocking techniques. You can't force a technique to work. You can't say, I'm only going to use blocking. Sometimes I'll have to evade, sometimes I'll have to immobilize, but I'm going to try to use the blocking as much as possible. All right, ready? Just punching right to the body. All right, there are a few more punches at me. Got to get in on me. That's it. All right, try to work. Double up on the punches if you want to. All right, give me a little distance here. And you can see what I'm doing is just putting my elbows in the way. And see, that puts me in position to where I can continue punching with my opponent. So blocking tends to be a very appropriate way of using defense in our kickboxing system. This full contact approach to Jun Fan kickboxing is very important if you want to learn the style. Now, it's also important that we don't just jump into the fighting method. We're taking it step by step. First of all, we learn to evade the attack. Then we learn to block. And this time we're going to look at a concept called destroying the attack. As my opponent comes in, what I would typically do, give me a left lead. If he throws a jab, I'll simply intercept, but I'm intercepting not to stop the technique, but to stop the weapon. So as he punches in, I'm hitting right to the bicep like that. And I want to time it so that I'm actually hitting him as he's hitting me. Now this actually hurts, and I can see the grimace on Ian's face, but uh, we've got to do it for the tape, right? Okay, so as we're moving around here, I can take my hand and actually hit my opponent. Now, if he's throwing the right, and I'm in an orthodox position, I can still move out here and hit, but I've got to do it in a position to where I don't uh, throw a slow technique and then get a counter over top of it, through your left, over there. Okay? So as we're moving, and again, this is to the body, and the reason I'm having it go to the body this time is so if we're beginners, it doesn't hurt. If you get hit in the body, you're not going to die. Uh, when people start hitting to the face and they start fighting back like this, and you'll see even accomplished fighters that when they get into a, a street fight because they're not used to the spatial distribution that they have to get used to uh, for the head, they all go into a fight like this with their head back out of the way. 
So we're training it step by step so that you'll be a feel comfortable in this full contact format. So as we move around this time, I'm going to have Ian throwing the techniques as usual. Instead of trying to just use the footwork to evade or the elbows to block, I'm going to see if I can incorporate as much of the destruction as possible. Sometimes I might even throw a right hand around. Now, typically what I'm doing is not a jab or a straight type of technique, but more of a hooking technique in order to capture those biceps and triceps. Now, there are some fighters who, when they get in tight, will actually hit to the arms. I don't see that that's necessary unless you're into sport context in which you're going for several rounds and you want to deteriorate these muscles over a period of time. In self-defense, they simply won't come into play. However, in self-defense, if a person is punching at you with a jab, for example, and you just step back and hit that bicep, you've got a good opportunity to, to immobilize that arm so he doesn't try to hit you again. All right, Ian, here we go. We're going to move around just a little here. You're going to throw them at the body, and I'm going to see if I can't uh, use some destructions on it. All right. Go ahead and hit me. Now, you've got to have as your plan just hitting. Sometimes I'll be able to block, and sometimes I'll just move out of the way, but I want you to try to get that target right there. That's it. And every time I get an opportunity, I'm just going to move in and destruct that arm. See, that's just before he tries to move there. Now, if I want to switch positions, I can do that. You go ahead. You hit me. Now, your goal is to get that stomach, and here it is. And my goal is to stop you from doing that through either evasive footwork or by destructions. And what I see is happening here is the evasion is working as good as anything. Okay, good. So you can see one method that I have in terms of self-defense is to try to destroy that limb as it's thrown at me. Let's look at redirection is still another way to stop the attack from striking you. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is deny access to our targets. That's the body here, the head and face and, and legs. Now, as my opponent comes in, Ian, if you'll come in, as he throws a left jab into the body, I can take it right out away from me like that, just down and out. And as he throws it a pretty stiff jab, then it's easy for me to capture and just redirect it out like that. Now, if he throws the right cross here, I'm going to take my forward hand and send it away from me just like that. One more. All right, let me show it to the camera. And okay, so from our fighting position, as the punch comes in, the right hand goes in just like the block. But instead of the block, and you usually make your contact with this forearm, I'm just going to send it away from me like that. As the punch comes in, I'll do what amounts to the block. But because there's enough energy on it, I'll just pull it right out of the direction of my body. If he's throwing the right cross from my orthodox boxing position, as the punch comes in, I'll just intercept it and direct it out away from me. As it's coming in, same thing as my block, I'll just pick it up and send it away from me. Just pick it up and send it away. And we call that redirection. Ian, come on back in. Uh, now, as he's throwing the punch, you have to make sure that you don't put so much energy here and get so uh, caught in the idea of pulling the hand down that he can retract that hand and then punch you with it. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're just pulling here as long as you have energy. The minute you feel it pull back, then you need to get your hand back. Now, this technique, again, starts out essentially the same as the block. As he's punching in, I'm basically blocking. But because he's really trying hard to get in there, I can send it away from me. If he's just punching and snapping back, then I probably won't be able to redirect. If I try to force the technique, pull it back quickly, see what happens, pull it back quickly. Okay? But if he's really trying to stick it in, I've got a block or I can redirect. Block or same thing, except for I just redirect it out of the way. And sometimes when you're moving with your opponent, your opponent will get a little stronger and start throwing in the techniques. And when they do that, you can easily tell, is this going to be just a block, an evasive technique, or are you going to actually redirect the technique away from him? This time I'm going to have Ian move around throwing some punches at the body. And again, I'm not going to try to force in a redirection. Sometimes a redirection will work. Sometimes it won't work. I'll block. I'll evade. I'll intercept. I'm not going to try to destroy this time, but I'll either block, evade, or, or redirect. 
Okay, in as we move around here, you're punching in at me. And I was able to get both of them that time because the way he's punching here. Okay, now again, you can tell sometimes I block and sometimes I'll actually get a redirection here just like that. Okay, now, stop for a second. One of the great things about a redirection is it also lets you reposition. You don't have to stand in one uh, stance and as he punches and simply redirect. As you redirect, you can take that energy to reposition. Now by repositioning, we've taken our entire line of targets away from the opponent, denying access. And what we want to ultimately do as he punches is deny access. That's the first rule here. Okay, and then secondly, position so that I am able to strike my opponent here. Okay, so as he's punching, I'm, I'm redirecting and repositioning here. See, so if I'm using self-defense, I've got a lot of techniques that I can use there. And once again, we'll move around and see if you can't pick up any repositioning that I might be able to do. And we're just going to work right around in this direction. Ian? And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm stepping back and forth so that I'm not just a standing duck, not just standing there trying to stop it. That's the hardest thing I can do. But I want to continually move in and out of the way against my opponent. In this case, what I'm doing is giving him a target. I'm trying to entice him in here. Okay, this is what we call attack by drawing. And as I do that, look what I'm doing. Okay, I'm just moving out away from my opponent like this. See, sometimes I'll get him used to the uh, redirection here. And sometimes I'll just block and move out of the way. And I'm able to do that by combining the footwork, the evasive footwork, the block, the redirection, and I haven't even hit my opponent at this time. And remember that at any point, I might decide to put in a destruction technique there. Good enough. And that's using redirection in our basic uh, exercises here for the full contact fighting. From this basic stance that we've been using, remember that we, we can block. We can take that block if we have enough energy and turn it into a redirection. And this time we're going to find out what it takes to use that same technique but to intercept the opponent. Ian? As my opponent tries a left jab to the body, I want to time it so that I'm coming right over the top like that. Right over the top to hit him. And now if he throws the right cross again, just right over the top to hit. Okay. So in effect, as my opponent punches at me, I'm punching at my opponent. The disadvantage of that is, of course, going to be that whenever you initiate an attack and you throw your attack out there, now you're vulnerable. That's when you're most vulnerable is when you're trying to attack your opponent. So you're taking a chance here. Now, to kind of give you an opportunity to lose that disadvantage in taking the chance, you want to make sure that you have the block. If he punches, left punch, I can block, I can redirect, or I can intercept. See how that works? It's basically the same position. To block, to redirect, to intercept. And okay, let me show it to the camera here. Okay, as we're moving around, sometimes I'll simply block, sometimes I'll block and redirect, and sometimes I'll go out for a block and follow through. Now, using that method, I'm able to choose the one that I want to use on the spot. If it looks like he's really set up a powerful technique, I'll probably redirect it. If it looks like he's set up just a little uh, balancing technique, just a little technique to make me work, I'll probably just try to block it. If it looks like he's trying a technique to hit me, it's not too powerful, not, uh, not too weak, I'll probably just intercept that technique. Ian, let's move around here just a little. And now sometimes I'll use the left, sometimes I'll use the right. And remember, you can't stand here and try to force the techniques. I can't tell you. I'll definitely be able to do an interception here. It just depends on a lot of things. If I'm close enough, if I'm evasive enough, if I'm able to block and then move from there. So Ian, if you'll punch the body, we'll move around here. And notice I'm not going to it yet. And there was an opportunity that I had. I just threw that one in. Okay, and there we go again. If I see him telegraph the technique, then I'll use to go for a destruction or an interception. Okay, stop right there. 
Now, when they telegraph the technique, a lot of times if you catch a person reaching, if you happen to be the kind of fighter that is pretty evasive and you can stay back just out of distance, you'll get your opponent to start reaching in at you. When they do that, they become much more telegraphic. As they telegraph the technique, in other words, you can see the shoulder coming, you can see the person reaching at you, then that gives you the best opportunity to intercept or to evade the technique. Come on in. Okay, so as we're moving around, this time, sometimes I'll use evasive footwork, sometimes I'll try to block, sometimes I'll try to destruct the arm, sometimes I'll try to intercept and redirect, and sometimes I'll try to intercept to strike my opponent. Okay, here we go, moving around. And notice that I'm not actually throwing any techniques at all. In this position, I'm just using some distance here. I don't want to stay back and make him chase me, so if he moves back, sometimes I'll move in. I can also basically smother the technique, as you can see me doing here. So as he's punching at me, again, I'm just throwing the techniques in. And I saw him just kind of hang on on that technique, so I went ahead and hit him. You can see if you set the timing right, it's really eight easy to make that work. Go ahead and hit and hit and double up. Give me some combinations. Go for it. That's it. Working, working. There you go. Good, good, good. Okay. Now if I can get him to really try to hit me, that'll give me a good destruction. See, so I had to attack by drawing there. I have to entice him to bring him in to make him do that. And as he's coming in, again, I'm just kind of pushing against his hand, repositioning here. Now I'm going to try to start moving a little bit more, make my opponent work. Sometimes I'll just reach out and stop the technique. There we go. Now those had something on it. Okay, good enough. So those are at least five ways that we can stop an attack before we get into any full contact fighting. In this tape, we're going to look at five levels of sparring expertise that's required in the Jun Fan kickboxing method. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about equipment. You have to invest in some equipment, both hand gear and foot gear. The shin guards and, and uh, foot guards go you know, right on your hand like this, and there's a lot of different, right on your feet like this, rather. There's a lot of different types that you can pick up. As far as hand gear is concerned, boxing gloves are by far your best. A lot of people see those Kempo gloves that are used uh, for Jeet Kune Do foot photography. Uh, they actually are not very efficient in terms of hitting. Now, what we're trying to do is actually hit an opponent. So you'll find that you can still do some of the tramping, especially the trap boxing that I'll introduce on this tape, if you have the right equipment. So if you're going to get into this type of sparring, get some boxing gloves and some shin instep protection. In these five levels, we're going to start out with technique, technique. We're not really concerned about hitting yet. And then we're going to go to hitting to the body. Now, you just saw some opportunities for Ian to strike me, but in the next series that we look at, I'll be hitting back. So it'll be back and forth there. And the person that has per, uh, performed that evasive footwork, that has worked on those basic skills, that's the person that's going to be in a good position for this fighting, counterfighting techniques that we're going to look at. So let's go right into the technique sparring. A good way to start out your sparring is just what we call technique sparring. In other words, I'm just going to throw out some techniques with my partner, and we're not actually making any contact at all. And in fact, to be very safe, we'll go just to the body, and we want this sparring to be something that you feel comfortable with, and you feel so comfortable with, it's easy to move around. Ian, okay, in this case, there are a lot of ways to approach this. I might start out, first of all, just throwing a jab, letting my partner throw a jab. And I throw a jab, and my partner throws a jab. And then a jab, and a jab. I'll just move around, taking my time, just thinking of the technique that I want to throw. Jab to jab. Sometimes I might want to double up on the jab, so this time I'll throw one, two, like that. Let my opponent throw the same type of technique. One, two. And again, just moving around. One, two. Okay, this time I might throw a, a high, low. One, two, like that. And again, just back and forth, one, two. And you can see all I'm doing here is just getting used to this spatial awareness here, this distance from me to my opponent. And now, as I'm moving around, I might throw a one, two back and forth. 
Okay, another technique, I have to get it at least close enough to make it realistic, is a one-two. And if you're just a beginner, you may want to throw these just at the body as we move around here. Okay, this time I'm going to start incorporating some kicking techniques. Let's throw, first of all, a little front kick. I'll just stamp out a little front kick, and my opponent move with a front kick. I'll kick, my opponent kicks. Now, you don't want to actually make any contact at this point. But we're just moving around, actually just kind of exercising. Sometimes we may want to switch sides and let the right side just up and kick, back, up and kick, back, and then let's put in the hook kick. So we just move back and forth. We're trying our, it's called a simple direct attack. Just a single technique moving in. And as you do this, go ahead and snap your technique. Just like you intend to make contact, except you don't plan to make any contact on this. If you have an inverted hook kick, give me a left lead. You can try that technique, just back and forth with your partner. Simple and direct, just making it work for you. Just back and forth. Hey, you might want to put both the punch and the kick together. So I'll just punch and then kick. Moving around, punch, kick. And I'm moving around, punch, kick. I don't have to be too concerned about my defense. I'm using evasive footwork to just allow me to stay out of the way. And then, once you have that down, it's time to actually do a little more of a freestyle type of sparring. Let's take a look at that. Ian, as we start off, we're just going to throw some punches and kicks actually at the body. Okay, we're not trying to make any real contact, we're just moving around. You can use double up on your techniques, single techniques, or whatever. But as you do it, try to keep in mind that don't throw a technique, a kick, when your opponent's throwing a kick, just working back and forth, non-contact. I said non-contact, I went right ahead and hit you, didn't I? That's it, just back and forth there. Just so that you feel comfortable with your kicking techniques and with your punching techniques. Now I can double up there. I can hit. Sometimes you can just kind of aim at those hands sticking out there. Actually make some contact with them. But this should be kind of a fun time for you as you're doing your techniques. And actually you can see that we're really kind of taking turns. He'll throw a technique, and then he'll let me throw a technique. And I want to kind of just work on my distancing and get used to moving in and moving out. And sometimes I'll take an individual technique, like an oblique kick, and every time I get the opportunity, I'll just try to shoot that in and see how it works. And then, as I feel a little bit more comfortable with it, as my opponent tries a shot, I'll just try to intercept it. See if I can't move right in on him. As he throws a technique, I'll come back, I'll break the rhythm. Instead of just going back and forth, one, two, I'll let him come in, I'll draw him in, and then fire back a technique at him. And again, this is just non-contact. Now, as we do this, it gives you an opportunity to try some techniques you wouldn't normally throw. For example, a a reverse crescent kick coming out. A kick coming up and pushing away. An oblique kick to the body. So I know there's no penalty for missing here because my opponent isn't trying to hit me. And you can have a lot of fun with this non-contact sparring in level one. Full contact sparring is essential to Jeet Kune Do, especially to the Jun Fan kickboxing approach to JKD. As you can see, the sparring can be a lot of fun if you break it down into these different levels. If you rush right into punching to the head, kicking to the body and such, tra tripping and taking the person down, it becomes somewhat dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. You're much better off if you'll take it step by step, breaking it down and putting it together. But again, you can't leave this out of your training system. You have to get into the sparring. Now, on the last tape, I talked, introduced the concept of trap boxing. Now, 
word concept means to get a general notion, a general feeling about it. If we have a concept of boxing, a boxing concept, for example, we just know something about boxing. That doesn't mean we're doing hardcore boxing. This time, we're going to look at the tramp boxing a little more and see how we can incorporate that into our fighting system. Because at this level, we're both going to box and trap box. That means to capture the opponent and sweep the opponent or continue fighting from this position. Ian? Okay, so at this point, we feel comfortable just throwing the punches back and forth and in a position right over here. Now, for trap boxing, what I want to do, I'm, I've grown tired of just throwing the techniques out at my opponent and letting my opponent come in. Okay, so I'm going to try to establish a position. My position is to control that neck. If I can control the neck, then I control the fighter. After I control the neck and I have the forward hand, that'll be my first position for entering. I know that my opponent's got to use his right arm because his left arm is captured and his neck is in an awkward position. As he does that, I'll use a typical boxing technique of coming up and over to control it. Now, all I did is bring my hand up and over like that. Step right around here. Okay, so I entered by stopping, immobilizing that forward hand, using my footwork to get me in to control the head. Once I control the head, I get the person down, and I know they're going to throw that right hand because they don't have anything else to throw. Okay, watch any boxing match when they tie up with one hand, they have to use the opposite hand. Now, in boxing, sport boxing, of course, this is illegal, and the referee will come over and break them apart. They don't want them to tie up. Why? Because when they tie up, then that's where they get hurt. That's where they get bumped, head butts. That's where they bite each other. And we want to make sure in boxing that that doesn't occur. In trap boxing, this is what we want to happen. So as the person is punching in, I'll control that forward hand, work into the neck, and now watch that right hand come around, and I'll just go right over the top and lock it up just like that. Now in this case, what I did was lock it up and come back on the left hand. On the left hand, I now have the left hand closed, so I'm now in position to work my opponent, and there's just not a lot he can do. What he will do is try to get away from me, and as he does that, I can continue to work him, or I can go ahead and smash with the elbow, or I can lock up for a submission type of hold. Okay, so let me go back through that. So the goal in tramp boxing is to control that neck, control that head. Okay, and we do that, our goal is to move in, control the head, tie up the hands. One, we'll take the opposite hand, go ahead and throw the right. Okay, and now, sometimes I won't capture that hand, but my opponent will bring it back to hit with. Okay, if he's hitting, sometimes I might just be blocking. And other times, if he finds out he can't hit in center like that, he'll go for a wide hook. When he does that, I'll close up this hand. And at this point, I've now crossed my hands. I just take my hands and cross them here. And as I cross my hands, I'm just going to let my opponent wear himself out. I'm in a very strong position here where my opponent is just going to have to work around. He can't get away from me. I've worked with big, strong boxers that once you tie them up, they just can't get away from you. And as he does this, I might be throwing in some techniques. I might be trying to irritate him. And in fact, what I'm trying to do is getting to pull this elbow down so that I can slip my left hand over and capture his arm. Now, once I have the arm captured with my left hand, that frees up my right hand. Once my right hand is free, I'm in a great position to look for a submission. I can take my thumb and poke it into his eye. I can strike low to the groin. I can just keep hammering on the person until he decides to stop. I'm also in position to start throwing the knees, stomps, or position so that I can take the person down. By, sometimes I might want to do that by toughening up the back leg. That is, I'll take my heel like this and come up and hit right into the hamstring. Okay? And that's, you can see him kind of bucking away. That hurts quite a bit when he does that. Now keep in mind that as I've controlled this opponent, I'm hitting, I'm striking, I'm tenderizing, I'm getting him lightened up here, and at any point I may shift around. Now I've got him in a headlock, and I can take him down to the floor and put him out from that. Okay, so 
Uh, our goal for the trap boxing again is to move in, capture the head, then one by one capture the arms. Let's say this time that I wasn't able to capture the right hand, but it's the left hand that tries to get me. As he moves around, I'll capture the right hand first this time. Okay, at any time I can be bouncing his head back, okay, pulling his head back in self-defense, I might be throwing in a headbutt. I might be biting. Okay? I just want to get him to work. In self-defense, I might be throwing knees back and forth here that we worked on. I might be doing stomps. I may be pulling him down to the ground, bouncing him back. I may be trying to wrench this elbow. Okay? I'm moving around, constantly struggling. Now, for the viewers, I have a microphone here, so I'm not trying to work too hard. But as I'm going back and forth here, my opponent eventually is going to get smart and try to throw the right hand. When he does that, I'm going to capture that right hand. As I capture the right hand again, I'm just going to rest for a minute. I'm going to make him do the work. As he does the work, he's going to struggle. Now, I might sometimes slip in a kicking technique. I've got a great biting technique here. He'll probably be taking his head up and putting it over, over to the other side. Okay. I might lay my head down and just kind of rest here for a second. Step on the foot. Okay. At any point, I might take one of the arms across and capture the other arm. In this case, I did exactly opposite. I captured that arm. Now, this gives me one free hand that I can just irritate him into submission. Or, if I didn't have on a glove, of course, I could take that thumb and go right to the eye. That pretty much ends the fight there. I can take this hand over. I can throw in elbows. I can capture that neck. I can wrench the neck back and forth. I can toss the person down to the floor from here. I can take my leg. I can take my knee back and forth. Once I get him down and twisted, I can start throwing elbows here. I can just continue to get the person out of the way here using the trap boxing. Okay, so what we have here is using boxing techniques to immobilize the opponent. Okay, now, I'm going to try to move around here just a little bit with my partner as he's throwing some techniques to the body. And when I see the opportunity, right there it was. I captured the head. When I capture the head, I just want to be in position to capture the arms. As you can see this, he's still fighting. As he does this, I'm just blocking, waiting for the opportunity to capture both hands. Right there it came. There's the opportunity. You can see the hands caught. And now I'm in position to just drill my opponent until they can't really do anything against me. Okay? So this type of sparring we call boxing to trap boxing back and forth. Now I'll go through this again for you. Okay? Again, we're just kind of moving around. And I'm just kind of putting together all of my techniques here. Just back and forth here. Okay? All right, just got the head. Right, in this case, I just took him down. Okay, whenever I can establish control of the neck, I'll do that. Now, that hook could just as easily be to the head. But I'm just looking for the position in which I can ca capture the neck. Now, what's happened here, well, I happen to get a crank out of that. And that's what we're trying to do, just try... Different techniques, nice and slow, working from our boxing format as we go in against an opponent. And you can see I'm using the interception, the deflection. Sometimes I step back. Sometimes I draw him in. And when I draw him in, there's that neck again. And I'm ready to capture him and take him out right from there. This level we call boxing to trap boxing. It's a lot of fun. Give it a try. Now, level four sparring is one of my favorite types of sparring. It's something that's very enjoyable. It's good exercise. It's good aerobics for you. It's level four is kicking and punching to the body. Now, you can use as much contact as you want to here. You do light contact. You do heavy contact. It's just a good way to practice your sparring. Remember that you can do focus pad drills, you can do bag work, you can do individual drills for as long as you want to, but the minute you put on the gear and try the techniques moving around in freestyle, 
it gives you still another level of sophistication in terms of learning scientific street finding. Come on in, Ian. I'm going to show you some of the things that we'll be doing here in the punching and kicking to the body. Obviously, since we've already demonstrated the punching, it includes all of the punching techniques that we've worked on, the kicking techniques, and also we're going to start trying some takedowns. The minute we start raising the leg, that's the best opportunity to start the takedowns, the sweeps and takedowns. Now here are two types of sweeps that we typically use. One will be a forward leg sweep in which we come in and just kick the leg out from under. We just start, slide up and sweep the leg back. We just slide up and sweep the leg back out of the way. Now the kick is used just in like this to pull the leg back out of the way. That's all you're trying to do. We slide up and sweep just like that. Well, if I have the person moving, especially if he's just finished a front kick or a round kick, I'll step in and sweep the leg right out from under him. He does the kick, I step in and sweep the leg right out and under him. Once more he does the kick, I step in and sweep the leg out from under him. Now notice what I'm doing with my left hand. I'll take my left hand, come right over here, Ian. I'll take my left hand as I slide in to sweep, and I'll put it right up on top. This will stop him from coming in to me. Okay, it's a blocking type of technique, and also it allows me to take the shoulder or the head and pull down as I sweep. Again, as we're moving around, he will throw the kick. I'll follow it through and just sweep him right down like that. Another type of sweeping technique that's very effective is used off of a right cross. Anytime that I get the person moving back and working against that right cross, look what I have. I have a perfect position to step in and sweep that forward leg with the reverse leg. So here we are. I'll throw a right cross. And as I throw it, I'll step in and sweep the opponent down to the ground. Once again, he may have already thrown a kick or a punch or whatever. And I throw my punch and then I step and sweep. As he's here, I throw my punch, I step and sweep. And I want to kind of keep that hand out in front. Now, uh, later on when we go to head work, punching to the head, just throw a high jab out, I'll slip under it and I'll come up like this and take him down. It's the same basic motion. Okay? As he punches, I would come under it, back, and sweep down. But right now, since we're not hitting to the head, we're only using the body for safety. I'll just throw that punch and come right over the top of it with a little sweep there. Now sometimes I'll be in close to my opponent and I'll sweep one side and then sweep the other side. That's a double sweep. Okay, so if we're in tight, I'll sweep one leg. If I didn't get it, I'll work the opposite leg just like that. As we're moving in, I'll sweep one. In this case, I can actually come through. There's enough distance there to actually come through from the opposite side. Okay. All right, now, some of my favorite kicking techniques that I like to use as I move around, anytime the person throws out a jab, a forward punch, that sets up a hook kick to the body. Anytime he throws a jab, he's susceptible to this hook kick. Now, if you're used to throwing the hook kick, like the karate people throw the round kick, up high, chambered, it's going to be much more easy for your opponent to evade it because it becomes very telegraphic. So we just want to throw our hook kick up, and down like that. And if you leave it up in the air, that allows your opponent to grab or destroy the kick. So we want to use the kick, so it's just stop a little snapping technique like that. A little snapping technique like that. Sometimes I'll just kick the person and drop it down. And another technique that I like to use a lot, uh, we really haven't shown, but it's a shoving technique, a pushing technique, uh, a perning technique sometimes used in Thai boxing. I just take my foot up and I shove him back. I take my foot up like a front kick, only I take it up and shove back like that. I take it up and push the opponent back. If I have an opponent kind of crowning me, instead of doing a kick, because if I do a kick here, it's not going to stop him from coming forward. I'll do the kick, but he still has enough momentum to come in and capture me, maybe even getting me up to the wall or the ring rope. Okay, so what I'll do with this foot is I'll bring it in and I'll shove back. Just coming in, I bring my foot up and shove him back. As he's coming in, I'll take my foot and shove him back. Now, we're not going to the head yet, but I can do the same technique right up to the face. Like that. Same type of technique right up to the face. As my opponent's coming in, I just take that foot, shove him back out of the way. 
take the foot, shove him back out of the way. Another technique that I like to use here uh, is the oblique kick, just up and check. Move around, if I, keep, if I catch my partner kind of sleeping, kind of resting, I'll just throw that kick up, just like that. Just as we're moving, I'll just throw that kick up. Anytime you get your opponent working off of that oblique kick, thinking about that oblique kick, feel free to follow through with a hook kick. Okay? Now, you don't want to throw your oblique kick and telegraph it and let your partner see it coming, as if that's my technique. That's what you don't want to do. You want to throw your oblique kick and then follow through with your hook kick. So as we're moving around, I'll go one, two, just like that. I'll sit up, so I'm one and two, just like that. Sometimes if my opponent is moving back away from me, I'll throw one and then throw a second, a little oblique kick, like that. I'll throw one, moving in, throw a second. I'm just coming up, one and two with my hook. At any time, I might follow through with punching techniques, and as I see my opponent getting back out of the way, I'll follow through with a kick. Come back this way, Ian. Okay, come on in, son. If I'm hitting my opponent and making him move back, I'll take my reverse foot and shove him back out of the way. As my opponent is in, one, two, reverse foot, shove him out of the way. Now, why did I elect to shove him, to push him, as opposed to kicking him? As I punch him back and get him out of the way, that sits up more power for me. Okay, so I made him move back, pushed him, and now look, I've got all this springy motion up to thrust in a lot of power here with the technique. Okay, so I'm making the person move back, shoving, and then following through with a much more powerful technique. Once again, I make my opponent move back, kick, and then kick. Sometimes I like to take the front foot and just throw a little oblique kick out. Or I'll take the front foot and sweep, just like that. Again, to kind of keep him honest, to make sure that my opponent doesn't just come in on me. I just sweep across like that, across like that. Sweep like that, just front foot. Sweep just like that. Sometimes if I have a person doing a lot of punching, okay, and I'm sweeping down low, that stops them from just taking that stance, getting set, and throwing out a good punch. These little techniques here are meant to irritate and also to distract, especially if he's punching. I'll just throw that little punch out like that. Punch it like that, and then I'm in position. If he'll allow me, a lot of times when you hit a person like that, as he throws a jab, and you take that first little step, if he pauses for a second, now watch this. That's what's going to happen. He'll throw it, and I'll just pause for a second. He'll throw it, and I'll just pause for a second. He'll throw it, I'll pause, I'll get that second kick in. Okay, so as he's throwing the jab, I'll hit, get that second kick in. He'll hit, I'll go one, I'll go two, I'll get a second kick in. If I can get the opponent working down low like that, get a second kick in, I'll just follow it through with an inverted hook into the body. As I'm moving, you throw the jab. I go one, two, I'll get an inverted hook into the body. Forward, one, two, inverted hook. All right, Ian, let's move around a little. I'm going to try to show you some of these techniques as we go through them. Now, this is kicking and punching to the body. Now, we're not really throwing a lot of contact here. If my opponent is in close, and I'm going to be punching him. If he just stays out at that range, I'm going to be working the legs. I can get some good techniques in on him. In that case, I just kind of check the leg away from him. And there's the technique I was just talking about. That was just a double leg sweep, hit both of them that time. Inverted hook. That was called a progressive indirect. I start in one direction, finish with the other. A 
Good. And you can see that this kind of kicking and punching to the body with contact is a terrific way to practice. After we've had the opportunity to try some techniques back and forth with uh, no pressure, just moving back and uh, throwing the techniques, now we can start introducing a little bit of contact. As we do the contact, we're going for the body only, just the punches. Each step, we introduce a little more threat, a little more danger into it, uh, make it a little more interesting for the practitioner. This time, Ian, come on in here, and let me show you exactly the type of things we're going to do. As we're moving around, we're going to incorporate all of those mo motions that we talked about earlier. As he punches, I'll be able to block and intercept the techniques. I'll just move around some when I want to. But this time, I get to start punching back. Now, watch what we're going to do here as we punch back. Hey, basically, whenever I feel like I'm in trouble or if I want to just introduce the match, in other words, if I just want to kind of get the distance, I'll throw out a jab. The jab, or the straight lead, is to just get the distance. I'm just kind of moving around. Now, notice that I'm dropping my hand sometimes. That's all right, because I don't have to be concerned about protecting anything. It's just the body. I'm letting the distance that I have here serve as my protection. I don't have to punch and pull back and get into a rigorous stance, because once I hit, I know that I have that distance. I can just move away from my opponent with that. So, for example, let me show you the jab, first of all, with contact. I'm just going to focus on the jab, moving around a little. You get to hit two, Ian. In fact, you get to throw anything you want to there. See what I'm doing? So I'm throwing that jab, first of all, just to kind of keep him busy, not let him just throw whatever he wants to. He's got to, first of all, deal with my jab. I'm doubling up on the jab. If I want to switch sides and go to a right lead, I can do that. But my jab is out there just to kind of keep him busy. Of course, I can score with that lead hand. And later on, when we go to the head, you'll see it comes much more effective. But basically, I'm just throwing a jab out and moving with my partner back and forth. Sometimes I'll practice my switch step, just kind of getting the range using that jab and focusing on the lead hand. Okay, that's good. Now, uh, the second lead hand technique that I like to use is a hook. Ian, come right here. The hook can be used just like the jab. I just stick it out and hook across. And once again, in this type of sparring, I don't have to be uh, overly concerned with defense. I'm letting the distance work for me. So. Instead of the jab, I'll just take my hook and stick it out like that. All right, Ian, let's work a little. Now, the hook is very effective for that destroy technique. You see, when I, if I can time that arm coming out, I'll just smack it. It slows the opponent's arm down. And again, it just kind of keeps him busy. Let's me work on range. And then sometimes I'll double up jab and hook. Okay. If I throw a jab, he'll pretty much have to react to it. I can pull it back and just fire a hook right in. And what I'm doing here is getting used to throwing it low, throwing it high. But since I have it at this nice, safe stomach area here, no one gets hurt. We just move around. And it's important to answer every blow, either with distance, keep punching, or blocking or redirecting or intercepting. And so as we throw the techniques, you can get a little more energy into them. You can start throwing some combinations if you want to. Uh, you should be up on your toes. As you're doing this, feel free to change. As I'm punching here, I may feel like there's no opening, so I'll just switch stance, which puts me outside and makes him switch around for me. Gives me a little opening. If my opponent switches, for example, and I feel like my right hand isn't quite as strong, or perhaps his right hand is stronger, I may want to switch back. Use that weaker side out in front. 
there was a nice bicep hit because, and I tell you why I can do that, because I, I see after about a minute of this, he's starting to bring his hand back a little bit slower. And when he does that, I'll just time it so that I get it right into the bicep there. And that's a terrific destruction, destroy technique against my opponent. And this time, let me introduce the right cross. Hey, as I throw my jab out and back, and I keep him busy, and if I can see him going for it and reacting to it, then I'll throw my right cross there. I'll throw my right cross in there. Really can't throw much of an uppercut because we're letting distance come into play. You typically won't stand up here and bang back and forth. Uh, so that reduces those techniques. Now the back fist. You could throw a back fist if you wanted to. It won't have too much effect on an opponent as you do that. As we're moving, okay. and if you watch the tape on strategies, you can see that I'm attacked by drawing. I'm drawing him in. I'm giving him that opening, and I'm saying, here it is. But then, once he has it, I'm letting distance work for me. See, I'm just sucking in just a little there, letting the upper body move, and even if I get hit, it doesn't hurt. You get used to it. We're just moving back and forth with our partner, and sometimes when I see him pull his hands back, that's when I want to rush in with that rally of straight punches there. And by the way, if I wanted to try that straight blast that we've worked with, I want to time it so that I catch him either before he throws the technique or as he's retracting the technique. Okay, so uh, sometimes I'll see this is called sit point. When he gets sit to throw the technique, I'll have to break it up right there. Let's try that. Okay, you can see each time that as I'm moving here, Uh, my opponent kind of gets sit. You'll see his feet go a little bit uh, flatter on the floor, getting sit, and I have to pick up on that. And as I do, I want to throw my punches just right in there to stop him. And sometimes we'll just kind of get going and throw a lot of punches in there. And it's kind of a comfort thing. It, it takes a while to pick it up as we move here. I can see he's dropping his left hand, so I'm going to go right over top of that with my straight right hand. I'm going to try not to meet that hand. And let me show you what I did right here since we have unmatched sides. I got to reach out and tap down that jab, and that leaves him with what? With his right cross. If I tap the jab down, I know he's going to throw the right cross, throw it. So there is my destruct right into the arm. So as we're moving, I just reach out, tap that one down, and boom, I've got it. But you can only do those so many times until your opponent either says stop it or change his stance and try something else. But basically, using distance, evade, you don't have to move too fast here. But you can, of course, we really haven't talked about pushing, but sometimes if you get too close, you can reach out and just thrust your partner back if you feel you need that. This is, sometimes we call this counter offensive. I basically let him come in and then I'll throw that hook. And this is certainly much more effective to the head than it would be to the body but we're kind of using our distance here as we play through. That's good, Ian. Okay, so once again, this body sparring can be terrific. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I try to get in quite a few rounds each day. And now we're ready for level five sparring, which incorporates the kicking, the punching, and the trap boxing. Ian? Let me just kind of go through this uh, to review. Uh, at this point, we can throw our punches to the body, we can throw our kicks to the body, we can also sweep, and in some cases, if we get in pretty close, we want to try to control that neck, 
and perhaps take the person down or just maintain control in the trap boxing range. Okay, so we're going from kicking range to boxing range to in tight stand up grappling, which we've designated as trap boxing. All right, Ian, let's move around a little. And remember, when you first start out, you may want to just kind of throw out some jabs to get a feel or hooks, those forward hand techniques, just kind of give your feel there. Now, if you have an opponent who starts out a few kicks, throw a few ground kicks at me, okay, especially off the forward side here, hey, you may want to start that oblique kick, just kind of checking that leg. Whenever you see him go up for it, you may want to throw it. Now, if you throw the oblique kick and you time it correctly, terrific. If you throw the oblique kick and you see he's already chambered, in other words, his knee up, knee is up too high, then just let your right hand stay in position and you'll go ahead and get a block. Okay, so once again, there was a proper check. I missed it that time and my right hand stays in position. Remember, we're not working for the head at all yet. We want to go through this nice and safe. It's comfortable, it's enjoyable to do this type of sparring. And you don't have to put in too much power. You can if you want to a little later on. Now, I just switch sides. And whenever I switch sides, this inverted hook is a perfect technique because most fighters will stand with their hands out. That leaves the stomach wide open for the inverted hook like that. And sometimes I'll throw that hook out. I'll just throw it low to the leg and then right up in on it. That would just be a combination attack. But basically, I want to stay back and let distance work for me. If I get tired or if I'm talking, I just want to move around and let that distance work. And a lot of times I'll try to smother attack. If I see a kick or a punch coming in, I'll just try to smother it and get in too tight for it. Right there's a leg kick for me. And how I sit that up is I let him come in, again, attack by drawing, I let him come in a little. Once he came in and gave me this side, I was here, and I could sweep back. If you see your opponent start bobbing, uh, uh, weaving a little bit left and right, if they weave over to one side, they have to come back. When they come back, boom, if you time it correctly, you'll catch them right, in, right as they're changing their weight from one side to another. That's what you want to try to do. And any time I, I see him getting set, I'll just throw that little oblique kick out just to kind of irritate him sometimes, just to keep him honest, let him know he can't just throw anything at me. And again, I'm evading basically, sitting up there for a sweep. Uh, generally, we'll spend a few minutes here and one of the strategies I use is to let my opponent work a little, get tired. Once I see those hands getting a little bit slower, and then I'll follow in, and now I'm at tramp boxing range. Now remember, as he's working, I'll just try to capture. Now he could, of course, try to sweep me, but he's playing nice, and that's how we would get into the tramp boxing there. Again, just kind of controlling the opponent as we move back and forth. This time, I'll start working on a few distance kicks. <clears throat> I'm gonna see if I can't keep my opponent back. I've decided I don't want him in close, and when I want to move him back, I'll just take that foot that we worked on and just keep the person moving. One technique that I like to use is just a forward push, and if I can push the person back, and gain some distance, I'll go for a sweep and then follow through with some punching skills. There's that inverted hook. Now, that's going to have the effect of keeping his hands down. And once we go to the face, you'll notice how that comes into play. I've broken these levels of sparring down so that you could get used to one level. And each time you pick it up, it gives you something for the next level as you practice. Don't forget your basics, your double lead hand. And again, just keeping the opponent busy. 
Ooh, good body shot there. Sometimes when they change positions, they're a little tentative on it. <clears throat> and when they're tentative on it, then you can capitalize. You want to, as my instructor Joe Lewis likes to say, exploit your opponent's weaknesses. Find out where they're weak and stay there. Work on them. Just a little forward leg takedown, sweep. And as you practice this, you'll just get a sense of distance, which is going to be extremely important for realistic self-defense. And why I say realistic is because I have no indication of what he's going to be doing. I don't know whether he's going to throw a jab or a cross or a kick. He'll just throw whatever he wants to. And when you put yourself in that position, where you have the unknown, an unknown factor, then you start getting a little more realistic, as Bruce Lee called it, scientific street fighting. And our definition on the using no way as way comes into play in that sometimes I may teach a hook that comes straight across, but in the actual heat of the battle, my hook might be a little bit different my oblique kick might change lines somewhat. My inverted hook, again, may go from a different angle. But ultimately, in Jeet Kune Do, what works is anything that scores. OK, Ian, good enough. And that concludes level five, sparring, kicking, punching, and tramp boxing to the body only. That concludes tape four on our series on full contact fighting, John Von style. Now, what we wanted to accomplish was an introduction to this full contact fighting system. By taking it step by step, increasingly bringing in the contact, we make it safe, we make it enjoyable, we make it something that a person enjoys following through on. It's something that you'd like to practice. Now, in the next tape, we're going to look at the head. We're going to start putting the head as an actual contact area. There are other variables that we have to introduce, the slipping, the bobbing, uh, the weaving, and it gets a little more threatening as we go along, but again, if you'll take it step by step, there are nine levels to get to the full contact fighting, and if you take it step by step, I think it'll be very useful for you. Now, we also have an advancement and certification program in our newly developed International Jun Fan Kickboxing Association, and I hope you'll be interested in, in hearing about that in tape number five. My name is Jerry Beasley. Thanks very much for watching our program.